Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting to episodes 5 and 6 of Blue Reflection Ray. So let's go ahead and get started with episode 5 in 3, 2, 1, go. Honestly, I probably wasn't going to watch this tonight because I've been home... Five, three, six, three, six, four, seven, three. About two hours now, and I ate like a early dinner. And girl, I'm tired. <laughs> but I'm like, let me get it done, so I ain't gotta worry about it. Uh oh. Prince Yuki, no, Princess Yuki's magical room. Okay. Oh. <laughs> really? I thought you would have just, you know, get away. Well, okay, so your grandma's still there. Are you okay? Did you not get enough sleep? I mean, guess that's that Princess Yuki app, huh? But you never downloaded it though? Mm-hmm. 
No, 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 no. She's just like there. It's just like a chat room. Do you think Yuki is working with um, Nina and the other girls? Because it wouldn't surprise me if she's also uh, working with, you know, Hori is, um, sister as well. Mm-hmm. It's a possibility. Yeah, because she could use anyone just as, like, just like that. Oh, no, I can't speak. I just heard targets. Yeah, but seriously, something about this Princess Yuki thing, it is very, like, not only sketchy, it feels very scammy. Like, you know, when you buy something, like, off the internet, and then 50 out of 50, by the time it gets sent to you, it's not what you ordered. <laughs> Probably not, but they have to be. Yeah, you're right. Exactly, and sometimes you don't always want to put your personal business online. Well, I mean, you know what? And I'm going to say this about Momo. Momo seems very, like, old school type. Where, you know how most, like, everyone likes to put their business on the internet? Momo was one of those, like, mm, y'all need to know all my damn business. <laughs> It's cute. Oh, then there's a panda too. <laughs> Damn, makes me want ice cream. But you know, when I was working today, but by the time y'all will see this, you know. <laughs> It will be several weeks later. But when I was working today, I, I wanted ice cream. And I was, like, doing my little shopping on my break. And unfortunately, we had no ice cream. So I was like, hmm, I had to go somewhere else. Then. But I came home. I was tired. <laughs>
Yeah, but see, how are y'all so fucking sure that this quote-unquote spell will work with Princess Yuki? Seriously, there's so much sketch in this that it's not even funny. You're just worried, and it's okay. But you need to eat. Yeah, something tells me that's going to happen too. It might not happen now, but give it a couple of episodes from now. Oh? Mm. Yeah, what exactly freaking happened? Mm. Damn, that is worse than when a YouTuber or even any other, like, big, big, quote-unquote, influencer gets in trouble with something that they did in their past, and it just comes back to haunt them. The fact that she is the horny one of the group, like, I mean, I shouldn't even be surprised even when episode one and two, I, when I watched that, but girl, <laughs> they will, you, it's usually like, okay, they will either take the one character who is the most horniest and they'll also make her like the yandere as well, but. <laughs> You probably did, but not enough.
Yeah, she's very similar to that one chick Aoi Yuki played in, um, in Grand Bellum. Because in the end, Aoi Yuki's character was the ultimate villain. She was the whole, the whole entire time, she really was. Oh, damn. Excuse you. So hold on, she just got stabbed and she got just turned on by what? Girl, what? Yeah, she a crazy bitch. No, because it's Yuki this time. Oh, well, damn, I thought this was going to be her time. <laughs> like, I'm really hoping Miyako gets to become one. It would be nice. Almost like, in a way, her, like, redemption arc for her. But it's, it, it seems more like... With her being the side help, she's still getting that redemption mark. Oh, that feels better. I think I'm going to change after this episode. Mm. And you won't be able to go outside because you're sick. went away you telling me because Mia she's the most OP <laughs> Miyako is not even a reflector Miyako is something beyond a reflector that is some godlike skills right there 
even just talking to someone and getting someone to change their minds. You never know what's going to happen out of that. Uh Uh-oh. That has to be. And seeing Uta is what's her face with the short hair who basically got stabbed. Okay. I, I once again I gotta commemorate Miyoko. Miyoko, once again, she's not a reflector, but she's still a part of this quote-unquote group family, whatever this dynamic is between these four girls. And even though she cannot transform into essentially a magical girl, she is able to do something. And from that, she can change from someone losing their flower fragments, aka, still in my opinion, their souls, that little bit piece of them. I, I mean... She's good at what she does. And I feel like we're going to see possibly more of that going into from episode 7 to the end of this series. But I do feel like a couple of times where possibly, once again, Miyako will be a target because of the fact is, you know, the situation between her and her mom um, escalating and everything. But who really knows? This is only episode 6. Um... No, no, not episode six. This is episode five. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. And, and anything can happen from episode seven to the end of this series. We know Hiori is going to find out about her sister. We, Because we all know that's coming. So I'm still hoping that happens by episode 12. I feel like when Ruka also finds out too, that's going to devastate her. I think it's also going to devastate the shit out of Momo everything this might end up breaking these girls apart but the fact that you know all four of these girls shined but Miyako was the one who shined the most pretty much says that hopefully she she is she is one of those characters who I was thinking like at first oh she's just gonna be here for like a one-off or two three couple episodes and then after that we're gonna get like a replacement from her to now like oh she's becoming more of a character we get a little bit more backstory on her the situation between her and her mom and how that like oh excuse me oh my gosh i'm sorry this is why (laughs) when you come home from work or you're tired um and how that is going to escalate because that is something that i really truly want to see at least by the halfway point of this show is her mother coming to see her and possibly dragging her back home and saying no I want you to live with us I want you to stay here heck I like even with Momo still saying that um she's still gonna stay at her home and not live in the dorms because she still feels her Graham's um presence around her it could still be that little she's still a little self-conscious about certain things and how people always left her so she is afraid to kind of really have a connection with these four girls because I mean not four girls three girls because she feels like they might end up leaving her just as her family did in the past but who really knows but other than that go ahead and pause the video and I will see you guys in one second for episode six okay episode six in three two one go 
I'm so tired, but I still gotta record two more shows after this. Or really, no, one show, but two episodes. And then after that, I can lay down and probably go to sleep. I guess it's Nina choking her. Mm hmm. Once again, the Yuri is very strong in this show. I mean, how is obvious even with this episode right now? Basically. So that I wonder, since no Nina has technically broken up with Uta, what the hell is she about to do? Like, is she gonna get revenge on these three? Girl, mm mm. That is so fucked up. <laughs> Don't you just hate when you work with someone and they're like, you know, hey, we're going to work together and then the other one doesn't do anything. But like, yeah, we did a good job. I did most of the work, though. Of course not.
She's adorable. I want mommy to say I'm a good girl. Oh, damn! Okay, now we we just went from Yuri to now, um, oh my god, what is that DM show with, uh, Happy, Happy Sweet Life or some shit? It, it, it was Happy Something. It was the, it was about the two girls, uh, it was a little girl and a teenage girl and they lived in an apartment together. Woo! Happy Sugar Life, there we go. So hold on, wait, here's one thing I want to ask. Can even a little girl like her have a fragmented flower? Shit, she's going to get in trouble. Oh. 
Exactly. That and now officially child abuse. Because you're abusing your kid. But you're still leaving her all alone, though. Oh, God, and it's getting cold. Hold the fuck up. Are you telling me that little girl was Nina? You gotta be fucking kidding me. Damn, Nina's literally about to be the most depressing character out of, the, like, this entire freaking cast. Like, oh my god. You were abused by your mom, and then finally when you and your mom were somewhat happy, your mom gets killed. And now you have no one except, you know, Hori's sister, that other girl, and then Uta. prostitute thing.
Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Something's going to happen to her. Yeah. She never came home. Ah! What the hell? Oh shit, damn. Nina, you don't want to do that shit, though. So then hold up. Are you telling me the girl who pretended to be knows me? Is she now dead or some ish? What the fuck is going on? I'm so confused.
Are they gonna kiss? I know. Just take each other's flowers. Okay. We doing the established connection. Mm-hmm. What did you see though? Because she found the truth. But still, that barely gives me anything. Come on now. Woo, I can't. I can't. This is only episode six. Same Momo. Same Momo. What the hell exactly? Y'all were friends. Something made her find out the truth. What the fuck? And then Nina... Fucking Nina and her backstory. Oh my god, I was not expecting that at all. Like, Jesus effing Christ. Like, to have her be a young girl, baby, toddler ish, even, but still, like, able to speak and form sentences. Her mom is abusing her. She's trying to basically have a better relationship with her mom. Um, and her mom is basically a drunk almost in a way, but then eventually she changes her life around, but because of that, you know, it ends up being her downfall because later on, it, who knows what the hell, the hell could have happened. She could have had a client that killed her, or it just could have been a random man that killed her. And Nina, you know, she goes and she takes a walk and she comes home and she finds out that her mother, the only other person who she's known for the longest time, is now dead. So she's homeless. She has nowhere to go to. She goes somewhere. She meets, quote unquote, Nozamine. Bond, uh, you know, gets a friendship bond or like even a bond that it has a relationship with this girl, a genuine friendship with this girl. And then the last time that she sees Nozamine, she's not even fucking Nozamine. A new Nozamine comes in and such. Uh, you know, bitch, what the fuck was that? Like, please 
please uh, uh, elaborate on that because I there there's so much stuff in this fucking episode for this week. That is so freaking confusing. That whole little nose meme bit was hella fucking confusing. So, what is every single girl who was at that bridge waiting with that Saki chick? Were they all prostitutes? And was Saki technically their pimp? There's so many unanswered fucking questions. Come on now. And then the situation with Momo and Hiyori's sister. There's still a lot of unanswered questions on that. So hopefully we do get an episode that does focus on the past between these two and their relationship and such. So hopefully that happens. Other than that, I mean, both these episodes are really fucking good. I mean, this episode was very on the depressing side. Very, very similar to, like, Happy Sugar Life in a nutshell and such. If you have not seen that, really, really recommend it. It's a damn good show, but it, to me still, it had a very meter mediocre ending, even though because when you watch that first episode, you kind of know already what's going to happen. And then after that, when you read the manga, because the manga technically kind of ends the same way, because at the time when Happy Sugar Life was coming out, um, there was only a few more chapters left, and they were getting closer and closer to the point where we were in the manga. And, and it's, a, it's a very interesting ending. That is all I will say about that, where it was just like, when I, fit, when I finished the anime, I was just like, big ol' what the absolute fuck. That's all. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction view tours, episodes five and six of Blue Reflection Ray. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel and make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And, of course, I will see <clears throat> my Patreons all next Saturday and everyone else the following Monday for episodes seven and eight. Bye, guys.